Morning everybody. February 9th, I believe. It's Monday. And the past couple of 41 years, <laughs> I was going to say days, but no, it's not days, it's years, um, since I understood certain things, you know, so it might have not been 41, but it might have been still 30-something years. There are so many um, questions that we just don't quite understand the answers, and one of one of it is a little bit of confusion of unanswered prayers, and wh what's it behind it? I don't have the answer just yet. However, I have a link to a possible understanding, and I've been listening to this particular preaching, and it's on um, from Bethel podcast. His name uh, is Bill Johnson, and the um, sermon is called Answers Matter. I will put the information down on the blog as well and try to find a link to direct you there. And I've been listening to that. And what I'll do today, I'll, I'll just code a lot of the things that he said. It's easier that way for me instead of trying to, to, to explain through my own understanding. However, it's only a few ideas, so I highly recommend... For anybody that has been searching uh, on this matter to really listen to the podcast, take some time, do it in a, a you know, a, don't do it in a hurry, a, take some time and listen to it and think about it, pray about it, look in the, up the verses and uh, hopefully that will help you, it's sure um, helping me, I don't have fully an understanding but uh, however it's helping me and um, so he, you know, he starts with Matthew 6, 9, which is the Lord's Prayer, that it talks about our Father in heaven. May your name be kept holy, may your kingdom come soon, may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So um, give us today the food we need and forgive us our sins, and as we forgive those who sin against us, and don't let us yield to temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. So that's in Matthew 6, 9. And I quote from uh, his um, sermon, Prayers without answers are pointless. Complacency and ignor ignorance tolerate unanswered prayers. You are not designed for an unanswered prayer. That's why there's no instructions about prayers. It doesn't mean there's not going to be a delay or a process, but we were not designed to coexist with unfulfilled prayers and end quote. And back to Matthew 6, 9 to the Lord's Prayer. And since Jesus had, Jesus had no sin, the prayer, it wasn't given for him, but it was given for us. On earth as it is in heaven is the reality of heaven we are to experience on earth. Uh, the process to bring anything we need is about, um, it's only found actually, sorry, through prayers. He's, he, meaning God, he's 100% committed to see the fulfillment of our prayers. And that's when the question comes, okay, but if that's happening, why aren't we seeing the fulfillment of some prayers, of some of our prayers, or maybe in some cases, most of our prayers, depends from person to person and what everybody has individually experienced. I continue, and this is a lot of coding from the sermon, which I found extremely helpful. If suffering is um, about tolerating sickness and pain so God can teach us something or make us an example. This is in violation to what Jesus taught us and what he modeled. If suffering comes with persecution, that is, of course, what comes with believing in Jesus Christ. And as the scriptures tell us specifically, anyone who um, believes who lives godly will suffer perse persecution but i re i refuse and i is the preacher 
in this case, refused to sanctify something, a theology of suffering, pain, and disease, that Jesus suffered to get rid of, to somehow exalt the process of disease, it just doesn't make sense. We all have a list of unanswered prayers, and we must navigate through this process without accusing God or taking blame ourselves. A lot of mournful prayers are actually a subtle ways of accusing God because they basically say, I am more compassionate than you um, do for this problem. There are prayers of self-pity, hoping that God will notice our condition and come and save us. What do we do with the prayers that are not answers or we don't see any breakthroughs? And... Um, in Matthew 6, 33, it's talked about to set our hearts to pursue first the kingdom of God. And I'll try to look that up. I have not really looked this up. Let's see. So, Matthew 6, 33, and it, where it says, Seek the kingdom of God above all else, and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. Most of the time, everything that we need is totally related to earthly things like, um, you know, a better job, a nicer home. But sometimes it has to do with um, disease, um, healing, uh, conflicts, um, so on and so forth. So it says to set our hearts to pursue first and foremost the display of God's um, dominion in every aspect of our lives that we have influence in instead of you know things like what I just said you know disease conflicts you know material things and we make again diseases material things conflicts really you know relationship problems um, etc and etc the primary focus of our prayers instead of what he just told us in the pre you know 6:33 Matthew 6:33 so um a lot of the times when we go through a shaking process which we all do it reveals what is unstable and most of the time we don't like it we don't like what it reveals and the unanswered prayer example is found in Mark 9, 17 through 30. And this is when the child, um, there was a mute child and the disciples could not heal him. And so Jesus did heal him. And the disciples went and asked, why couldn't we do this? And he's talking about, you know, that sort of uh, healing and takes, comes with a lot of prayer and um was that again? Fasting. And the point of this example of unanswered prayer is it didn't work for the disciples who were accustomed to an effective ministry. So the, ministry, the disciples had a really effective ministry through the, that particular time, w walking with Jesus. So they were accustomed to just see results, 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 amazing results too. When you see constantly people getting healed, um, that's, pretty, that's pretty amazing. Um, so, but w w the nice part about this, it's they didn't create a theology or untrue stories to make unanswered prayers okay. So sometimes, some things are supposed to be provoking and not putting us in a compliant, um, place and complacency is to tolerate the results of unanswered prayers instead of finding out why they were unanswered unanswered to begin with. And that would be the first point in this teaching of trying to explain unanswered prayers. And I left it there because I'm already at 9 minutes and 25, 26 seconds. So I highly recommend for anybody that has ever battled with this in their soul or um, in their mind to just really listen to the preaching and um, and just write uh, the notes for themselves and draw the conclusion for themselves. But really, prayfully, try to figure out 
um, the answer and the, the truth behind that instead of, I like the, you know, the fact that it says, you know, compl complacency is just an excuse to tolerate unanswered prayers. So this is it for today. Um, have a great day and we'll talk to you later. Bye.